If you are familiar with a sport or a Wrangler that does not have factory auxiliary switches, you know that there's a giant empty void there. What Z Automotive and Taser did was basically create a package that allows you to run the factory auxiliary buttons and the factory Rubicon front and rear locker, off-road plus, and sway bar button. So for Ryan's Jeep, he doesn't have any of this, so he doesn't even have a trailer hitch on this, which means he doesn't have any auxiliary buttons. With this full kit, we're gonna be able to have eight fused power sources up underneath our hood, and then all of our factory buttons down below. Okay, so we've got the hood popped. Now this bracket, this metal bracket, it's actually really nice the way that they've set it up. They've already put the threaded inserts for where the relay box and the bus breaker will go on the side, but we're gonna need to pull off just two 10 millimeter bolts on the outside here. And this is where a lot of these brackets do mount. So we're just gonna pull these off and set the bracket into place, right like this. So that's exactly how the bracket's gonna go. It's gonna have a little bump up so it can sit over top of the battery. Tighten up your 10 millimeter bolts. The next step after you have that done is to go ahead and actually set the relay board into place. Now we've already, of course, taken off the top cover. And what you're gonna do is align this through hole. So there's three holes that kind of are in this bracket with the through holes in here. And then you're gonna grab the two 3 8 inch screws with the star washers on them. And like I said, the nice thing is, is that they are already pre-threaded. So we don't need to pop it off and thread anything down below. Like snug those up. Once you've got the relay board installed, go ahead and grab your bus breaker here. Now this is open, so this is not allowing any power to go through. When I close this, that's connecting this circuit here and allowing power to flow through. So we're gonna go ahead and press this button, leaving it open and for the rest of this install. When you're putting this in, just make it so that this reset flap pops out towards you. So that's the only thing that you need to do. And honestly, that makes a bit more sense. That way you can see that it's reset from this side of the vehicle. To start connecting some of the power cables, go ahead and find yourself the shorter red power cable. So this is the shorter one here and a length of split loom. Go ahead and put the split loom over top of the red power cable. It still is nice because they didn't just give you all black power cables and say, here you go, you're good. This one here is gonna connect to this stud over here and the bottom stud on the bus. So we're gonna go ahead and set it up through, just like so. Kind of get that split loom. That split loom is just to protect it underneath here. Take our cap off. Remember, this is open still too. We don't want to have that closed. Ryan, or we'll break it. This is gonna go on here. It's gonna go right like so. A nice snug up, and you see that, the split loom there, Ryan, that's just to protect the wire because it's coming underneath yeah. here. You don't want a sharp edge on here when you're vibrating and driving off-road. Tighten this one up with a 10 millimeter, and then we'll move on to the next cable. After you have that first one installed, you're gonna go ahead and grab the longer red cable. So this one obviously is about four times as long as that first one. That's gonna go on the opposite side of the bus here. We're gonna get that installed on there. And then this will go over to the positive battery terminal. So. We're just gonna get this one started as well. And then this one, they want it to kind of come like this. And they say it can like almost wrap around through here. So wrap around, come down through, wrap around, and we'll tuck this up with some zip ties. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect it onto this one right here. Ryan, you can see that. It'll be a little bit tricky when I put your terminal down, but we're gonna connect it onto this power extension off of your positive. Somebody let me know what this is called in the comments below. Stupid answers only, please. <laughs> yeah. There we go. <laughs> Wrong answers only. Snug that up. And then see that, so it'll kind of tuck nicely. I'll give you a zip tie. I'll charge you for it though. And oh, uh, get that fastened onto here. And then we're gonna snug this one up. This is why it's important not to have this terminal or the bus connected here. We don't wanna have that connected and accidentally fry anything because you know that's what would happen if we had that. So let me put the little cap on and there you go. Now it's time for your ground wire here. So we've got another piece of split loom that we're just gonna put on. My kit or the kit that we have for Ryan's Jeep had two lengths of split loom. I chose the longer bit for the positive, that cable that we had is about a half inch longer, but this one go is good for the negative cable. And all this is doing, I really like that they included this, is just protecting the wire from making that kind of turn up here. So this one is going to run 
down through here. I can feel it with my hand. Just like so. Feed the rest of it through here. I'm gonna connect it to our negative terminal on the taser assembly, which is this one closest to the fuse panel. And that'll just go right like so. Making sure to have the washer and the lock washer above the terminal. And then also give it a little bit of pressure on this side so you're not jamming the terminal onto the connectors for the switch. That'll go like that. Yeah, so the split loom still is there. What that's gonna do is you're just gonna wrap it around like so, and that's gonna connect onto this negative stud here, which is another 10 millimeter. I haven't really needed anything but a 10 millimeter so far as far as sockets go. So we're just gonna connect it here. And then we're gonna clean up these wires a little bit too. So that's all it is. You got your negative connected, got all your positives run. That's all you needed to do up underneath the hood to give it some power to the actual unit. The next step is to get this inside your Jeep so you can control the accessories. But once you're done, all you'll need to do is connect your accessories right out here. So once you have this side of the connector here, you really only have three plugs that you need to work with. So you have a four pin, a three pin, and then just this kind of loop here that's gonna go into the positive terminal. So take the three pin, and wouldn't you know it, put it on the three pin there. Not the four? Not the four. Take the four pin. And put it on the three. Don't say that and put it on the four. And we're gonna run it to this positive terminal. So I already snugged this one up. We're gonna have to pull it back off. All right guys, so we're just gonna pull the cow panel off here. And then this wire will basically just run all the way up underneath the cow panel. If you have a little antenna or something that you can push the wire through, that makes it a heck of a lot easier. But for now, it's only four bolts that pull this off. So we're gonna open the passenger door in front of Ryan. And I'm just gonna tuck the wire into your Jeep a while. So it's basically gonna run up underneath here and it'll tuck in there. Okay guys, we're gonna tuck the wire back behind the cow panel here, right there. And then it tucks behind here. If you get that tucked in, what you gotta do is pop your side panel off here. So see if we can get under it from down here. <sighs> and I say to send it through like this, backwards just so that way the switch doesn't come through right away. So this, you're gonna kind of double loop it and then pull the male connector through. I gotta be honest with you, it's tight up in there, but you'll kind of want to tuck it all the way behind there. We're gonna let the male connector hang for now. So the dash is a lot more involved to pull off here. We're gonna start by pulling off these three screws over here on this side. I don't think I need to pull that one off too, but just to be safe. Here's an interesting thing, Ryan, you're gonna like. So on the old JLs, you used to have just one bolt here, one bolt here. You wouldn't even have to do any of this to get that center, the, all the kind of controls off. I was watching a guy do an install and he's like, I don't know how to get this glove box. I don't know how to get this oh shit handle off. There's a, a false compartment behind here that houses three Phillips head screws that go this way. And he's like fighting it, like, why isn't it coming off? And he's like, you gotta be kidding me after like two hours. So here's the false compartment swinging up from down below. Now this just pops off with a uh, trim prior tool, but there's the false compartment. And then there's one, two, three Phillips head screws coming in from this way. I didn't ever figure that out unless somebody had that. And I hope this saves you some time if you're ripping apart your dash for any reason. All right, so we've got those three screws removed. Grab a trim panel removal tool here. Don't worry, Ryan, it's all supposed to sound like that. So I should be able to work over to that side, but you see it's all one piece now. Not two pieces and super simple like before. I'm gonna try not to disconnect that entire, I think I can do it. Cause I have to pull the whole top dash pad off to get that to come off. I've already pulled enough screws off, but really I just need access to this back panel here. So what we're gonna do, all right, so that screw just needs to be removed. We disconnected the HVAC. And then this will be a big pull here. Now, after you have all those removed, including the 12 volt, we can pull this out and we'll move it to the table and get your switches installed. All right, guys, so once we have it on the table, we're gonna remove this cubby that Ryan had to store a few things. I don't know what you would store in here, Ryan, but we're now gonna put auxiliary switches and the Rubicon switches. 
After you have seven screws removed, you can pull this tray out. So we're gonna put our aux switches in on this side. There's just one notch there that it'll slot into and reuse the existing screws that we pulled out. And we're also gonna drop our factory Rubicon locker buttons onto this side. Oh, those go first, okay. So the Rubicon locker switch goes in. See how it's kind of detented here? Yeah. And then the aux switches go over top of it. Okay, so we just got both of the switch panels installed. Let's flip it over and take a look. So there you have it, both your factory Rubicon switches as well as your auxiliary switches here too, Off-Road Plus, Sway Bar Disconnect, and the Locker Off. The only buttons that Ryan does not have is of course the power window buttons because he did not for those. Peasant. It's a peasant edition here, but he likes it that way. Apparently some people do Crank like it that way. Crank windows or no two windows? Two doors are only real Jeeps. Yeah, two doors only real Jeeps, crank windows. He wouldn't even got AC or a top if he didn't have to. No, I don't need any of that 394s. Yeah, 394s, 6.92 liters. So the next step then, once you have all the wiring run and that panel removed, plus the new switches installed, go ahead and grab these two ends of your interior harness. This one is for the CAN bus connector or the CAN connection, and then this one connects to the harness that we just ran through. Now, since we have a 2024 Wrangler, behind this panel is a little bit different than a 2018 to 2023. So what I'm gonna do is if you can see this, Ryan, there's kind of on a, on a 24, you have this little module, there's a hole here. What I'm gonna do is run our connecting harness behind this piece of plastic and up through here. So what I'm gonna do, if it'll just kind of look like this. It looks like the previous model JLs are a little bit tighter because your screen here, the guts of it are behind instead of right there. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna push it through to like this point so I can pull some of the wires up. And then push it the rest of the way through. And I'm just doing this so I can get the wires. There, reach again. it, okay. All right guys, so this can connector is just gonna go into this side over here. It's a little bit tricky for Ryan to see. And then this connection goes into the one that we ran under the Jeep. Let's just make sure we have all the wires correct. Yep, they're all good. And then that's tucked away. So what I'm gonna do is just kind of bundle this up and tuck it up out of the way somewhere where it can't get Hit. Okay, so then after you have everything kind of connected, go ahead and plug this into the black box that's included with the kit. All right, we got the engine on. It's the only time we need to plug the CAN bus or need to have the bus connected. There you go. So there's okay. your green light. You just want to verify that. And then Abby, just press the, there's a red button at the top that'll release it. Okay, and we're good. So that was the only time we wanted to connect it there just to make sure it worked. Our green light was on. So one thing we just discovered and I verified under the hood that it's not true, but it is true underneath here. This is already pre-wired for the auxiliary switches. So this extra plug in here does not go to anything. It's the exact same as your auxiliary switch plug, but it just doesn't go into anything. It was just sitting behind here and I checked under your hood and there are no pre-leads pre under there. I wish, because that would be really cool and a cool hack for people. All right, so we've now closed the bus, giving power to all of our switches here, and check this out, guys. Aux one, three, four, two. Off-road plus turns on, sway bar plus, or sway bar turns on. Front and rear, rear only, off, shuts those off, and then these two will shut off. So if I'm not mistaken, Ryan, you have all four of these switches that we can use for lights or whatever else we want. The rear only, that'll activate the rear locker once we wire it. The front and rear, instead of doing like the front and rear, it just does the front. Okay. So there's only so many things that they yeah. can make work. Off-road plus, that and sway bar, those will be two different switches as well. So we could wire those to anything. Oh, sweet. So we could run like off-road plus to like an exhaust cutout or yeah. like rock lights or something, you know. Sway bar is another thing too, unless we get you a Rubicon sway bar. All right guys, so let's jump over and see if the aux switches actually pop up on this screen because I've never seen them done. Go into vehicle. Okay, dashboard, off-road pages, controls. They're not in there. Settings. Here they are. That's sick. They actually popped right up. So aux switches, they'll be down here in the settings. And that wasn't there before we checked. Wow. Aux switches. Now what's neat about this, so you have aux one, two, three, and four. When you go into aux one, all this works just like a factory auxiliary yeah. switch. So you can turn it to either be a latching or a momentary switch. So if you have a horn, you can just go beep and it'll come on and off. Power source, you can have it come only on with the ignition or all the time. So you can either change it from the, just the ignition or the battery. And then recall last date, I ran this one on my Jeep. 
because I would leave this on for like aux three, which the backlighting for my diodes. That way, yeah. whenever I started the Jeep, it was already, it would just turn on right away. Yeah, nice. So that's a really cool feature there, but look at that, it all works. On today's viewer rig of the video, we're checking out Mark's 2018 Rubicon Wrangler. Now he's got a Mopar two inch lift, a set of 38 by 13 and a half by 17 mile stars, the fuel covert wheels in the candy red, which looks great with a white Jeep behind it. Best top Trek top ultra, some rock slide engineering rock sliders, some quake daytime running lights up in the front to do the fender chop. And then some American Adventure Lab inner fender liners. Now I gotta say, I do really love that white and the red combo. That Jeep looks absolutely awesome and I can see some stickers on the back that say Diablo plus what looks like some Baja designs on the front of it great looking Jeep mark thank you so much for submitting and if you guys want to have a chance at your rig being featured be sure to hit us up through Instagram or send us an email but I gotta say I'm super happy with this kit if you guys want to check it out be sure to go on to Z Automotive and check out this full kit I mean honestly it's a little bit more pricey but when you think about it having to go to the dealership reprogram everything you're already gonna buy a taser anyways we've got it all set up and we're ready to go and we have a lot more durability and longevity i like the safety aspects under the hood of all the fuses everything working like so and this is just nice for a two-door like this that had nothing in it add some things onto this rubicon switch we're not going to tell you just yet but you guys are going to find out soon and we're super excited to build this jeep up but it took a little bit here we had to get some things done beforehand but my name is matt that's where i'm behind the camera and we want you to get out there and earn yours